everyone. I'm Leela Meadow Connor, CEO and mother founder of Mama Film here in Wichita, Kansas. We are so honored to be an official satellite screen partner for the 2021 Sundance Film Festival. And we hope you've been enjoying the films on the big screen here at the Starlight Drive-In. Um, and thank you to everyone who joined us for the screening of Mass tonight, the world premiere. And we're so excited to be joined by the film's director, Fran Kranz, and one of the leading actors, Martha Plimpton. Um, so first of all, congratulations on your Sundance premiere. That's super exciting. We're so glad that you're here. Um, and I just wanted to start out with um, a question for you, Fran. Um, so this is your first outing as a writer or director. I mean, you're, you're an actor, uh, you know, you've been uh, lots of stuff, but, um, and this film is quite literally like a conversation piece. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about the inspiration for it and how, and how maybe being a father yourself helped shape the story? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, the, the the Parkland shooting affected me differently because I, I was a father, because I was a parent. It was the first of that kind uh, since my daughter had been born. And that that day I was so I was so emotional. I got so overwhelmed kind of thinking I was listening to a mother on the radio while I was driving and I essentially was thinking, you know, what's going to happen to this person? And is she going to be okay? How do you get through this? And I just essentially kind of reflected those questions back on myself. How would I, what would happen to me? How do I get through that? And that night I ordered, um, uh, I was on Amazon, I ordered Dave Collins book Columbine. And that started essentially a two years of reading nothing but uh, books and articles or watching films about the subject matter. Um, just kind of a long list of a long reading list, which I sent to the actors and crew and things like that. Um, and I came across these meetings um, that I thought were extraordinary because it was about people trying to get through this and get through this pain and trying to heal and get understanding and, and figure out a way forward. And uh, from there, I kind of read more about the Forgiveness Project, which was essentially the same idea, bringing victims and perpetrators together. And I had always been fascinated by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, which is which was the, a similar, same idea, you know, bringing families of victims uh, to meet perpetrators and, um, you know, tell their stories. Uh, so that, that's, that was it. And that's how it coalesced. And that's when I realized, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And as an actor, uh, once I sort of had a sense of my characters, I kind of just sort of improvised a little bit, you know, and tried to sort of work my way through this conversation, embodying, so to speak, uh, these four characters. Wow, that's, yeah, I remember when Sandy Hook happened and I had a kindergartner and I just remember feeling so different being a parent. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Martha, of course I met you through your work with AS4, um, yeah. an amazing organization. And this film also has themes of social impact, like you're talking about social justice. Um, like we need to get together and talk to one another about the realities of what's happening in our country with school shootings and, you know, just relationships and how we, how we, communicate with one another. Is, is that something that drew you to being part of this film? I can't say it was. <laughs> um, in other words, it wasn't, it wasn't really the political or the social element that, um, that I wanted, that, that, that even occurred to me actually mm -hmm. when I first read it. Um, mostly I, I saw, uh, I saw this, this, these people in a room and the unfolding in real time of a conversation or a process or something. I liked that it, I, I just liked that. I liked that, I liked that it was intense, that it was in one room. And I, I liked the idea of seeing how how it would unfold or how it would unfurl or unspool or whatever. Um, and it was the writing really that uh, attracted me to, well, that made me want to do it because I hadn't ever read anything like this before. Um, and I hadn't ever really, I mean, usually you read a script and there's a sort of beginning, middle and end and, you know, um, there was nothing pat about the script. Um, it was brand new to me. And I thought I wanna do this because I wanna see what happens. Um, that was about it. Um, 
as far as everything else, I mean, I don't, I don't, I know what the movie is about and it's not really about what, what happened before. It's more about how do you move forward from that? Um, how do you find a way forward? How do you find peace or something um, when you know that when you're so, there's something about being attached to your grief um, in a way you don't, you don't want to let it go, you know, because, because you might lose the memory or the, the essence of your child. Yeah. So that really interested me, that, that element of it. And so, yeah. It's, that's amazing. Um, so there's such a few characters in this film. Um, Fran, can you talk about the casting of Martha and Ann Dowd and Jason Isaacs and Reed Burney and how you, how you saw that there, or you envisioned that they could be like, you know, a really amazing group of people to bring the story to life? Yeah, I and I, I think this kind of relates to what you were asking me earlier about, you know, being an actor. So how did this idea, did this idea relate to that at all? And I think, I think there was something, you know, the first draft was a screenplay, but everything after that was a play, was a stage play. I quickly realized, okay, this is, this is a play. Um, and so the actors sort of in my head or kind of the, the world I envisioned was, was theatrical for the, essentially 90% of the development of the script. Um, and I, I mean, I've been a fan of Martha, you know, for years. And I remember seeing her in Coast of Utopia. I mean, she, she as, I, as I grew up, I realized, okay, this is like an actor's actor. This is a real actor. And um, when her name came up, I mean, to be, to be honest, I was doing this on such a low budget, I never imagined uh, <laughs> you know, names getting involved. Um, and it started to become a, a reality, you know, when I started saying, hey, we have a location and some money. And then all of a sudden, any agents are covering the project and you start getting these names. And, you know, I had visions of Gail in my head, but as soon as I saw Martha's name, it, was, it had changed ever since, you know, she's, and, and she's incredible in the, in the film, you know, as, as you know, um, I, uh, the, a similar thing for Jason Isaacs, you know, I got an email from an agent uh, at my agency, Gersh, and saying, Jason Isaacs would like to meet. And, and my first reaction was like, no, no, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. You know what? Because I, I just, again, I just never imagined these kind of people involved. So it's an embarrassment of riches, really. And uh, I, I really lucked out with the cast. You know, Reed, I guess, would be sort of, um, uh, he, he is actually someone I wrote it for because I someone I knew in the theater community. Uh, doing some plays in New York. I met Reed years ago, maybe 2000, I'm not sure, 10 or so. And I'd always been a fan of his from these Annie Baker plays or this one Annie Baker play, I guess, that I saw, Circle Mirror Transformation. And I just thought Reed was amazing. Um, he was sort of embodied kind of that, you know, off-Broadway world to me. And I thought he was the coolest. So I, I he was someone that I kind of wrote the role in mind for and was the last one involved and she, uh, I had, to, I think I never, I never saw Linda in my head. It was the one character I never had like kind of an actress play or, you know, sort of, you, you know, a placeholder actor in that part. Never had that uh, with Linda. Um, and uh, we, we struggled with that kind of trying to figure it out. And there was a bit of like sort of throwing, you know, paint against the wall, trying to think of people. And somehow kind of at the 11th hour, I remember just seeing an email and she was on a list of names and it just felt like, Oh, how could you, uh, it just, it, of course, it was like a duh, like how to, how to, how did this, how did we not think of this, you know? And so it's a, it's a miracle when a cast kind of works that well. It's one thing to have good actors. It's another to have the chemistry or the alchemy, this kind of intangible thing that takes a whole life, that takes on a life of its own. And that's what these actors did. And it was important for a movie like this, the vehicle had to run by itself, right? I, I wasn't even in the room, you know, the room was so small when we were shooting. Uh, it's, it was that I, I couldn't fit in there with the video village and the, and the camera crew. So, and it was also such sensitive material. You kind of knew going in that, that we sh I shouldn't be in there and that they just need to do this. Um, and, you know, like I said, I lucked out. I, I, I mean, truly I, they're giving four, uh, 
you know, you're not going to see better performances this year. You know, there's not, there's, that doesn't, they don't really exist. You know, this is as good as it gets. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I lucked out. I hope that it kind of answers it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's such an amazing uh, quartet of, of actors. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Martha, you've mentioned a little bit about the intensity of this film and Jason Isaacs has said that he's, you know, been terrified about diving into the script and its intensity and, he, you know, did you feel the same way? I didn't. I wasn't terrified. I was a little nervous about how we're going to learn all those lines because <laughs> we had we had like a very short amount of time to shoot this in, and and we had although we did have rehearsal, it, it wasn't that much. We rehearsed for two days, I think, and really much. I think we got through the script once because we we talked so much with each other. Um, I mean, the, 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 that process was really great, actually, having those two days. Um, because we really, I mean, I don't know what it was about this material and about Fran as well. Um, and just his, you know, the nature of him somehow. It just made everyone instantly comfortable. And so we just, we talked a lot and we revealed a lot about ourselves and even though we were unpacking the script, we were also really connecting with our own lives and we were establishing trust. Um, and so we cried and we laughed. We laughed a lot, which is interesting. Um, maybe, I mean, I, you know, maybe it was to release the tension, which I think was obviously needed. Um, but yeah, I wasn't afraid of it. I, I don't know what it was about this, but I just felt like I could see the, I could see the path. And I can't really articulate that when that happens. It's kind of an, un, like a, it, it's an almost an unconscious thing. Um, but I could just see the beats. I could hear the music of the script. And so, and there, and it is, it's, that's how good the script is. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't too nervous, but I was, I was nervous about the lines and that's about it. Yeah. I, I felt, I felt bad a lot. That was one of the, the real panicky, you know, anxiety inducing things about the shoot, <laughs> uh, weather too. If we had one snow day, it, it could have ruined everything because we mm. had such a tight schedule. Um, but I felt I'd go home at night thinking, God, I've done this the wrong way. This isn't fair. There's no you, actors can't do this. You know, we were doing these 12 page days sometimes. I think there was, you know, five or six, 10 to 12 page days in a row of this heavy material. Um, and these are these are working actors that they did not have time to memorize. Like, you know, they were coming from different jobs. And, you know, we didn't we, like we only had the two days where we mostly talked and got to know each other, which mm -hmm. uh, all of these things, they somehow worked. And it's, and I don't know if, it, you know, it's some, it felt, it feels in retrospect, it felt it almost worked to our benefit, but I, I, uh, at the time, yeah, the sort of the, I, I was thinking, man, you, you chose to do this in 14 days on no money, you know, with no, rehear you know what I mean? I just thought, what have you done? But, um, uh, there was a, maybe a kind of an urgency to that, that allowed it to sort of, um, kind of open up and be this organic kind of thing that kind of blossomed into something I think really special, you know? You both sort of touched on this. Like, do you think that you being an actor uh, for both Martha and for you helped? Uh, a lot of directors aren't actors, but in a situation like this where it's so character driven, um, do, you do you think that made a difference? Um, should I go, is that my Martha? I'll, I'll yeah, talk well, quickly, yeah. I just, um, I, uh, I knew I knew I had to get out of their way, you know. I knew I had lucked out. I mean, these are these are four, these are four better actors than me, you know. <laughs> They're better. These guys are better than I am. So I, I, as soon as I got this thing together, especially after the rehearsal and kind of seeing, whoa, okay, this thing runs itself, um, you know. And and, and I, so I was scared, you know. First time director, I was like, I don't know what to say, you know. Sometimes I'd walk into the room and. As soon as I entered there, I was like, shut up, don't just go turn around, make something up. You know, I'd sort of been talking to the God. lighting guy. You know, <laughs> uh, you, know <laughs> you know, so I I had there was some of that, but I also, I mean, look, I I the directors that I thought I imagined would be good at this movie 
were the hands-off ones, you know, and, and I tried to, there was a director I worked with, Richard Nelson. He does a lot of theater in New York. He's brilliant. You know, he would let us change the line and, and to, a, to, a, to a point within reason. But it, he thought, look, if you're struggling, let's figure it out. It's got to flow out of you. It's got to be natural. Mm -hmm. And that's, I was trying to achieve something similar to his work, Richard Nelson's, and this kind of getting a verisimilitude and a real naturalism. And so it was important the actors just took ownership of it. Um, and it was also, you know, I was trying to, uh, I'm not going to compare myself to Mike Nichols, but I did Death of a Salesman with him and he was 80 years old and he couldn't get up and block things. He wasn't going to get up and give notes. So it turned into group therapy a little bit with this heavy material and salesman. You know, that's I sort of thought, OK, that's that's the way this might work, given my inexperience. I'm going to I'm going to try and get out of the way and let's see if we can foster relationships um, between ourselves and comfort and trust and vulnerability. And I think that's the best thing I can do. So certainly like my acting experience informed how I thought I could be a successful director. But um, yeah, in, in those ways. Was there much improvisation? Yeah. N not really. No, but I think lines were twi I mean, we we worked on the lines. I rewrote after rehearsal days. I rewrote, I believe, in the shoot. Um, I, I can think of real. I think I can think of pivotal moments uh, with Martha and with Jason, with all, all of them that were developed with the actor, right? Um, so, it, like I said, that Richard Nelson comparison. It wasn't. It was less improvisation. Although there's some. There's definitely some lines in the movie that were not in the script um, that the actors just did, and we loved in the edit and in the shoot. But um, it was a give and take. It was a relationship. I mean, the, uh, the actors, this, this, the script was out of place and then the actors took it to another place. Um, and uh, they, they had to because of the, the nature of it, that naturalism. They had to be co-writers sort of at a point. And, this, and they were. There's, there's definitely some really beautiful things that would not have happened without these relationships with these specific actors. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, what else? I, the other thing I think is really interesting is that, like, I know you shot this in 2019, right? Pre-pandemic. Yes, November and 2019. It's yeah. almost like this kind of small budget, small cast movie would be perfect, like ideal for, you know, shooting in this day and age right now yeah. where we are. Um, so, and you both touched a little bit about this, but what was the atmosphere like on set um, and throughout the shoot with such a small cast and crew, with such an intense story, it was really, I mean, if I'm, if I'm honest, we had a blast. <laughs> I mean, we really had a blast. We were laughing. I mean, it's strange, but we really laughed a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, we're doing this with two of the most hilarious people in the world, Reed, Bernie, and Ann Dowd. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, it may have been heavy material, but uh, in the in-between times, there was an enormous amount of laughter. And I think it was very good for us to be laughing so much, um, to be, to, because it was, it, it, it just lifted us out of that place so that we could be there. You know what I mean? You, so that we could, and I think, you know, I'm not one of those actors who like, you know, quiet on the set, you know, I don't need that to do my work. I like it, I like it when the, there's a, a switch flipped, you know, I like it, I like, I like a, a relaxed environment. Um, I don't like to, a lot of attention placed on me or a lot of pressure. Um, and I don't think any of the actor, I, I think Reed and Anne and, and Jason were all the same. I mean, it was lucky that we, we had that, you know, kind of relationship and that we clicked in that way. We all had sort of a similar working style. Um, and I'm really grateful for that because, I mean, I could go back and remember this as like this peer, this brief period in my work life where I was really, ugh, you know? depressed and heavy and the, uh, but I wasn't, I was extremely joyful and happy. And I think that made what we had to do easier. Does that make any sense? 
Yeah, the the laughter must have been cathartic and therapeutic at the same time. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And just yeah. absurd. I mean, it, we just it just was absurd. It was just a way to. It, I don't even know if I could call it. You know, it was, it was nothing intentional about it. It's just how it worked out. Yeah, yeah, and 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 as for the crew. You know, the, I joke the only people with experience on this movie were the actors, you know, uh, for the, the crew. And maybe they wouldn't appreciate that comment. But <laughs> they, were, they were mostly a year out of AFI, you know, and mm-hmm. some of the Idaho guys, uh, you know, they're, they're used to shooting mountain like ski videos, you know. So this was new to people. This was fresh. You felt a passion from the crew and the producers, too. You know, we were doing this this was all a first for us and so that blended with the actors and you know the the laughter started in the rehearsal it was very immediately it we could have fun together we knew immediately we could have a lot of fun together you know we didn't it was a short shoot but we we made it we made sure our fridays had a party you know and uh Mm -hmm. i think martha you had your birthday during the shoot right Mm -hmm. so there were these there were these elements that, you know, let's, and we have to embrace this levity and it wasn't conscious or by design. It just was, it was miraculous. It was, it was, it was truly fun. And I've been, I've been on plenty of jobs to know that that's not, that that's pretty, it's rare, you know, so we really lucked out in so many ways. And for both of you, what was it like shooting in that church specifically? And how did you choose that location? I, well, I, my, one of the producers, Casey Mott, we, uh, he was on board the first basically because we had produced a movie before a few years ago. Um, and he'd got a job in, in Ketchum, Idaho, Sun Valley, uh, running the Argus theater. It's the regional theater there. And he said, I can't help you if you do it here, but we have these cheap ski crews you know, until the ski season opens, which is Thanksgiving, you know, you can shoot for cheap. So I flew out and looked at a bunch of churches, but Ketchum's a very nice town. And these were, I I was looking for something more modest. And I, at the, there was the, literally, it sounds kind of, you know, made up, but it was the very last church I looked at. I didn't want to do it. I was tired. I I was ready to go home the next day. And the Reverend, this mother Leah Colville saw me staring through the window kind of like did one of these and you know i i i had a really sort of emotional conversation with her and talking about the film and made this kind of connection with her that actually made me kind of uncomfortable in the moment and i was like i gotta get out of here but i went i i met casey that night for dinner and i said i I think i got it i think i found the church there's something i didn't you, you i never wanted to get in the way as a director right and I felt like the church had to play that role too. It had to just be what it was, you know? And there was some pretty magnificent churches out there. Um, and I felt like, no, this this feels authentic, you know? And uh, we can also transform this ordinary place into something extraordinary, you know? And that was really important. And, uh, you know, when Ryan came out for the scout, my DP, Ryan Jackson Healy, you know, his first, I was terrified. He was like, oh my God, we're going to bring him to a room full of white walls. And he, and he got it. He was like, no, it's, this movie's about embracing discomfort. It's about, it's about taking on this, this challenge. Like let's, the, you know, but the, the production design was a lot of the production design was just leaving it there, you know? And we mm-hmm. had a beautiful, you know, that the mother Leah was just like a beautiful soul. And there was a lot of generosity in the church. And so it was a, it was a super comfortable home. Now, as for acting in the room, I'll leave that to Martha. Cause I'm <laughs> sure that. Yeah. That I want to really hear about hard. that. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, it was exactly as, as you say, Fran, I mean, it was uncomfortable. It was long days and, you know, it was, it was tight, tight, you know, and um, I think, you know, and the way Ryan shot it and, and you, Fran, the way you and Ryan decided to shoot it was really excellent because they were, they were really almost invisible to us, um, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yet there's movement. There's so much movement in this film. It's, it's, I, it's hard to, it's hard to describe, but, but even though we're all sitting in the same spots for, you know, almost an hour and a half or an hour, whatever it is, 
um, there's so much movement, both emotional and uh, and as far as the cinematography goes, um, that you really get a sense. You get a sense of the unraveling of this, you know, this tension. It's really brilliant. I, I don't know exactly how else to describe it, but yeah. You know, film is such a powerful means of, you know, catalyst for conversation. Um, yeah. And so for both of you, I'll just ask this final question. What is one thing or something or many things that you hope the audiences will take away from this film? Uh, I'll start, I'll start, okay. <laughs> and I'll start. I just, I hope that they take away from it that, that A, that, that you can make a film like this about people, about real, like real emotions, like the human, the human life is really interesting and really dynamic. Um, and you don't need to tidy everything up and you don't need a lot of music and you don't need flashbacks you know, um, so that's one thing I hope they take away that you can trust uh, the human experience to be interesting in and of itself. Um, I also hope that they take away something of the feeling of grace, forgiveness or reconciliation. You know, Fran says, you know, has said anyway, you know, that reconciliation without solving anything it doesn't need to be fixed necessarily. Um, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you, Fran. Yeah. No. Everything that everything that Martha said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. You know. I. Uh, how do I say this? I, in my experience and reading about all this and where obviously the inspirations came from and and writing it. Um, I, I cared sort of less and less and less about the, the events and, uh, you know, where this all came from and more and more and more about these people. And so I'm very sensitive to the fact that this is, this, this, while this is fiction, it's inspired, you know, by real events. And so I like this idea. I felt like we just need to listen to these people. If you can have compassion for these people, th that might promote real change. And so I feel like, you know, I, I just hope, I just, I would like the opportunity to listen to people who have actually been involved in stuff like this, as opposed to sort of telling them, you know, what the movie's about. Yeah, and it will be really exciting to hear what audiences have to say about it as well. Um, yeah. So thank you both so much for joining us. It is a truly thank spectacular you. film. Thank Thanks. you for including thank Wichita audiences um, as among some of the first folks in the world yeah. to see this film. Yeah. Uh, Martha, yeah, Martha, give my regards to Walter and Jimmy Jazz. Oh, I will. Thank you. <laughs> and Fran, best of luck. And I will look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank Thanks you. so much, both of you. Thank you, yeah, guys. Thank you.